Alright guys, so the goal of today is to build a micro size super power burner that doesn't currently exist on the market and a steam boiler capable of producing unbelievable amounts of steam. Shocking all, shocking amounts. Just amazing, more than I could ever hope to imagine amounts of steam. So this is hopefully the burner to do that. And this thing has to be small, like very small like a large tackle box. Okay, fellas, what we're going to see in this video is a step I call nozzle acquisition or nozzle position acquisition because you can't just throw a nozzle on one of these things, put it in a box, and ship it out. They've got to be tuned. They've got to be angled right in all directions. <clears throat> so that was the purpose of this test. And the way I do that with this particular type of burner is I'm just looking for the nicest looking flame. That way we don't get any buildup on one wall versus another. You want the buildup distribution in the combustion chamber to be even. Otherwise you get vortices and eddy currents that can cause the device to go out. We don't want that. Alright fellas, we'll take a little walk through this and uh, just want to give a shout out to Prolific Inventor. Man, dude, I seen that pump you keep telling me about at Menards today. They're selling it at Menards. It's a 360 PSI cordless pump. I think I'm going to buy that sucker, gut it, take the pump out of it, and install it in Carlos's car wash machine because the thing is awesome. I currently have a 160 PSI water pump. The pressure has been confirmed, it's the pressure rating that is. I got ripped off on some fake Chinese labeled eBay pump, so I've been kind of leery about pumps these days. So I'm thinking about just buying that pump you showed me and hooking it up to a pressure gauge and see if we in fact do get 360 PSI's because uh, Carlos' pump requires 20 bar, which is like 290. So I think that's gonna be the pump to do it. And I'm glad you, sh you showed me that link, bro. But, but like I said, if you guys post comments on my page that has links in it, they go into a comment review. And the reason I do that is because sometimes people, like, I'll have competitors post links to their burners and nozzles and stuff on my video. Which, I mean, I don't know. To each his own, right? But I'm, I'm not going to try to be free advertising for these people. So... I don't let some comments out, and sometimes I don't always get to them, but uh, I do read all of your guys' comments, and I hope that's proof to you, prolific inventor, that I do look at all your stuff. Man, I've just been so damn busy, I don't have time to respond to you guys always, so thank goodness for the heart button, right? Anyway, uh, I'm glad you showed me that pump, because just walking by at the store, one would never know it's 360 PSI, and we need to... Uh, produce a lot of steam in this project. Not only do I want uh, a miniaturized high pressure car wash, but I also want to kill weeds on an industrial scale. We're talking paint roller levels of production here. All these paint brushes just ain't going to do it. So I need to build something that's outside the box here, something that's small and tiny. And I'm hoping this little burner here is going to be able to fit that bill because uh, we do have some size restrictions on this project, which kind of makes it cool. Getting it to work ain't good enough. It's got to be a satellite, basically. A tiny little badass piece of machinery. You can see here we're looking at about 36 kilowatts of output. And um, I think this is a pretty good size flame for the size of the boiler I'm going to be running. Could probably go a little higher than that. I'm showing the turndown rating of this because turndown is important. Some burners are on full blast or they just don't run well at all. This one here can run through a very broad spectrum of operating range. I don't run it full bore in this test because I'm not interested in its max output. I'm looking at the size of the flame and determining whether or not it's compatible with... Uh, I just wanted to point out for those of you who are into the extreme details of things, one of the reasons why I have to adjust this nozzle versus just building it and setting it dimensionally correct is the fact that inside of that nozzle head the slightest little inaccuracy in the fabrication or the precision of the machining has what I call a long-range effect on the flame. These small 
minute imprecisions of you know thousandths of an inch on one side of the Ventura versus other the other have a drastic effect on the shape of the flame coming out of the end of this. If your inner pin stock is closer to the wall of the annular air jet on one side versus the other, the side where the pin stock is closest causes a higher velocity of air because it's pinched off more and more fluid subsequently is ejected from that side of the pin stock. You can see it plain as day on an imperfect nozzle. You can see how the vena contracta is not geometrically positioned directly in the center of the orifice. It's concentric, or it's eccentric, I'm sorry, it's eccentric. And because of those little eccentricities in the vena contracta geometry, which appear minute when you're looking at the dimensions of the nozzle, you don't even look that bad on the vena contracta itself, but it translates to drastic effects down the line in the flame. The flame will be shooting out the burner at an angle one side or facing down. All kinds of crazy things. You can't just set this nozzle directly geometrically perfect with the construction of the burner because that's not always where the precision of the nozzle itself wants it to be for optimum operation. If I could get these things dialed into a thousandth of an inch, which would just take too long, I'd have to charge 150 bucks for this thing for just the nozzle to get it that straight every time. There's a long brass bar going through this and getting it centered in that outer orifice is quite the challenge. You know, like two thousandths of an inch out of alignment causes the vena contracta to be about, I don't know, 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch out of alignment, which then translates down to a freaking inch to three inches out of alignment in the flame. It's drastically exaggerated or exasperated, I'm not sure of the term there. I call it a long range effect. Similar to the way when you take three quarts of water and add one quart of alcohol, you do not end up with four quarts of fluid because of the long range effect of the molecules interlocking with each other. I don't know, I'm shutting up, but, but that's that's what this video was all about. That's why I'm being so finicky. People have told me, well, why don't you just build a bracket that you set everything in like a jig and then bolt it together so you don't have to test it. Well, if my nozzles were down to the thousandth of an inch in precision, you could do that. But because they're not, I'm doomed to tune every burner before shipping. But the good thing is it's faster to tune the burner for the customer than to make a nozzle that's down to the thousandth of an inch precision. It's just too time consuming. You'll fidget with that thing for an hour and a half.